Hey folks, I'm Dave with Dagon Laser Craft. Today we're going to create a Halloween tiered tray scene from start to finish. We'll begin with a vector graphic purchased from Etsy. We'll process it through Lightburn laser cutting software, which is not a free software, but has a fully functional 60 day trial. And then we will cut the project and engrave it on the Xtool D1 Pro 40 watt laser. Let's get right to it. Okay, here we are in Lightburn. And when your Lightburn canvas first opens, uh, you can move it around by pushing down on the mouse wheel and just move it around. You can use the mouse wheel to scroll in and out to set it to your liking. Uh, I wanted to pop up a photo of a tiered tray for anyone that hasn't seen one. Uh, this is what we're going for, of course, this is not the scene we're doing. We're doing a Halloween scene, but it gives you a general idea. So, we need to set up the light burn canvas to the size wood that we're using, which is 298 millimeters by 298 millimeters. We can do that by going to the top left and selecting the square, going out to the light burn canvas, left click and drag it out. Notice on the top right, this pops up as a line because of some pre-cuts that I've had. And we don't want to cut this, we're just using it as a tool. So you can go down to the bottom, to T1, T2, either one. Click, make it a tool. And then you'll notice there's no output for that. After you do that, go back over to the top left and click on the arrow. So it'll select your area. Then go up back up to the top on the left. And for the width and the height, you want to adjust that to 298. So this little lock next to it, click it, unlock it. Highlight the width and make it 298. And then do the same thing for the height, 298. And then you can select your area again, go back up and lock that in place. So now this is just a tool and you can grab it with your mouse wheel, move it around, or you can grab it with the left button and just move it out of the way. Okay, so now we want to get the, the vector file that was purchased off of Etsy that we're working with. So you can go up top to import in the toolbar. And if the toolbar is not set up, you can go to file and import. And I just want to emphasize that uh, Lightburn is not a free software, but they do have a free fully functional 60 day trial. And uh, it's great software. I think you'll enjoy using it. So let's go back to import. Go find our SVG file. Uh, scalable vector graphic. It's scalable because you can you could go to the corners and you can drag this out if you wanted to, but I suggest not doing that. Uh, unless you really know you want it larger, don't do that. So, this is what we're working with. Um, so you can start trimming away at this to get it to where it fits on the area you're working with. So we know that the uh, the cut lines are black, and you can go over to the right where your lines are and your, your cuts and, and layers, and right click on these colors, and you can see uh, which ones they affect. And you can start getting this set up in the cut area. So I'm going to just highlight this, right click, delete it. And I'm going to grab this entire, well, see, I grabbed the other piece and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to grab this and try to resize it where, see how much. And you can move this in and out to, uh, to work around with it. So clearly this big circle is not going to fit. So we will try to get rid of that. These are real picky about grabbing. I'll probably end up taking that cat's eye out, and I did. Part of the cat came with it. 
Learn Control Z. Uh, Control Z will save you, and it will. You can just keep going back, Control Z, until you get to where you need to be. So let's just get these boots out of the way. If you don't grab around everything, it uh, it'll move in pieces. So it looks like we're just going to have to get this out of here in pieces. We'll have to do it on a later cut. Once you get that out of there, you can just highlight it and delete it. And just remember, you need to cut it later. But it looks like we can probably fit these in. Now you can take your, remember to take your uh, mouse wheel, and make this larger while you're working with it. And then you can just grab these pieces and get them out of here, maybe. And then you, sometimes you have to just reset them, just work with it, and then you can go around it, right click, and group. And then you don't have that problem no more. Okay, so now you can grab it as a whole piece and move it around. So we're going to have to do the same thing with these boots and these socks. Just put them back in place. And you go through this trouble so you can use as much of the wood as possible the first time around so you don't have a shop full of scraps and you're not wasting wood because it's it's not cheap you want to make the most use of it okay use your mouse wheel now and take it back down to size and you can see that we have this spot that we're working with you grab all of this and get it out of the way I think we can move one of these kitty cats up top if we can grab it. Yep, there we go. And just keep using your mouse to get you where you want to be. So you can grab the corner on this and then turn it a little bit and try to get it shaped to where you can slide it in. Okay, it looks like these boots may fit down here in the bottom. Just turn everything to where it best fits. And periodically you can go over here and grab your tool. Be careful not to stretch it, leave it as is. And you can check and make sure what you've done is actually a good thing. And you can leave the tool in place as long as you're you're not grabbing the entire thing when you just want to grab a, a piece. We'll move this down. Get that boot inside. And we saved ourselves a little bit of space because it's uh, actually 298.45 and we made it 298. So it helps keep us straight. There, we're going to slide that right into there. Then I think maybe maybe we can flip this around. Get it in there somewhere. So that's about the best use of that wood we can make. We've used, we've used all of it. Uh, now over here on the top right, these settings that are here are just some presets that I had in the palette down at the bottom left. Uh, of course, your your machine may be different. I mean, if you've got the X Tool D1 Pro 40 watt, this is what you want. It's good. 
if you've got uh, something else, then you'll have to work out those, those uh, the speed and power for that. But you want to cut last, and you have to adjust this to make sure that's what happens. I usually engrave first. That is the blue. So you can just click it and drag it up. Uh, scoring, I do next. So engraving is the darker um, cuts or the darker engraving. It's, uh, it's just a score, but it's a little deeper. So over, over here, the red one, and you can right click it as well, and it'll show you where each action is going to take place. So the scoring is just enough so you can have an outline. So when the letters, these letters are cut out, you know where to put them. So save you, save you a little bit of trouble. Okay, so now we want to move the cut line up above the tool and the tool will be last and there's no output for that. And actually, I, I usually just get rid of the, the tool. So this one is all set and we just need to do a frame and then send it over to the laser. And since I'm using um, absolute coordinates, I just click the, the uh, laser positioning icon and then just click somewhere nearby my uh, canvas and then my laser will just move there. So I'm not sure how yours is set up, so however it is. So now we just need to go to uh, the laser, get the wood set up in the, in the bed, and then come back and click start, and we will be okay. So let me do that, and I'll be right back. Okay, we're, we're all set up here in the uh, laser bed on the honeycomb. We've got our three millimeter basswood plywood uh, squared and we just need to do a, a frame and send it on over to the laser. Uh, I wanted to mention these homemade lifts. Uh, I learned about flash burn and doing something like this from the Louisiana Hobby Guy. If you haven't checked out his channel, I suggest you do. A lot of good information. But it'll, it'll help prevent from burning the surface of the wood and the back of the wood. Because the back of the wood really gets burned up pretty good with the texture of the, the honeycomb. So once you put these in, and I just made them with scrap and some uh, popsicle sticks. So anything that'll keep it off the bed will work. And then just lock it down however you normally do. Uh, also... You notice I don't use the uh, the shield. It's, it's so I can see the uh, the laser head more clear when I'm when I'm framing, and I do use safety goggles. So however you do it, just be safe. So uh, we just need to do a a frame, and then get it sent over to the laser. And that's off a little bit. And since I'm using absolute coordinates, I can just move the laser head to where I think it needs to start. And then hit frame again. Okay, looks like we're all set. Uh, we just need to hit start and send the code over to the laser. It's going to get a little loud. I've got to turn on the uh, air assist and the exhaust fan.
Okay, well that's it. So one warning is that with some of the smaller pieces, you run the risk of uh, sacrificing a few with the air assist on. There's one there I see that got it. So when that happens, and that's because of raising it up off of the honeycomb. Uh, but when that happens, uh, you just single out those couple of pieces and recut them with the uh, air assist off, and you're good. So I need to do that, and then uh, cut that last piece that wouldn't fit on here. And we'll put this together and see what it looks like. I'll Here's a, a look at the finished product. This is the piece I had to recut. Uh, having the job raised up off of the honeycomb bed, the air assist blew that piece around after it got cut and then it got chopped up by the laser. Um, but it's a, it's a small price to pay for such clean cuts and clean scoring and engraving. And if you do something like that, it'll, it'll save you a lot of time, a lot less sanding. I could have painted this before, but uh, I wanted to show how good raising it off the bed uh, makes it makes it look in the end. Uh, that flash burn tip is a great tip I got from the Louisiana Hobby Guy. So uh, the file, I purchased it off of Etsy. There's plenty of files on Etsy for sale. In most cases, you uh, you can just, you can cut your product, you can resell your product, but you can't resell or redistribute the uh the vector file itself so go out and get you some files and have some fun with your laser if there's any questions i can answer just drop them down in the comments and i'll get right back to you all right go have fun i apologize for the background noise we got a storm going on outside but this is a give you a look at the uh, finished project all painted up uh, looks pretty good. If you can paint better, yours will look much nicer, of course. And uh, I'll drop a link down in the description for uh, where I got this file off of uh, Etsy. And you can go out and do the same file if you like. But it's just one of the many projects you can have fun with with your laser. Okay, folks. There you have it. We completed our project. We took a vector graphic purchased on Etsy. We processed it through Lightburn. We cut it out and engraved it on the X-Tool D1 Pro 40 watt. And along the way, we learned how to prevent flash burn on our projects. We saved us a lot of time. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was beneficial to you. If you learned something, if you liked it, please like and subscribe. And we will see y'all next time. Thank you very much.